Hi, my name is Ajana Orozco. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a 54-year-old Shirakawa Apache, Mexican, Filipino, first-generation college student, a transfer student, transgender woman, gender studies major at LGBTQ studies minor. Giving this speech is the ultimate honor and very surreal. I never thought that I'd be standing before the graduating class giving a speech. I didn't finish high school. I took the GED test and went many years thinking that going back to school was something that I could not do. I've overcome homelessness, drug addiction, a physically abusive relationship, horrific medical treatments to fight HIV since 1991, and a hate crime bashing. My whole life I've experienced imposter syndrome and most of the time it was just from walking out of my door. Coming to UCLA was no exception. I remember my first day in the classroom at UCLA and I was, I was sitting in the auditorium that was bigger than most movie theaters and thinking, wow, I'm really a student here at UCLA. Then I started to question myself, could I do this? Did I make the right decision? Will I be successful? Should I have chosen UC Berkeley instead? Well, one of the first papers that I had to write, I lost all confidence in myself when I had to share my paper with a classmate. And I remember reading over a classmate's paper and losing all that confidence in the writing because their writing was just so amazing. And all I could do was read it and not make any critiques, right? And my classmate marked all over my paper with feedback. I was so embarrassed and felt defeated. I remember walking back to my dorm room thinking to myself, oh my, I am in for it, but that's what I'm here for, right? And through this first, that first quarter, my confidence in my writing was very low. And I just couldn't seem to be able to write with confidence I had before transferring to UCLA. I received two Bs that first quarter here. And an amazing thing happened though during that first quarter. And it was the start of changing that imposter syndrome that I was experiencing. And so like before transferring to UCLA, I called myself a victim of transphobia, but through what I was learning in my classes, I soon started calling myself a survivor of transphobia and violence. So my second quarter, I started to gain confidence as a scholar and I became a staff writer at UCLA's queer news magazine outright. And for the first time, I felt I belonged here at UCLA. Perhaps I can make it here. Perhaps I'm smarter than I thought I was. So one day I was walking back to the hill with one of my classmates when I mentioned my imposter syndrome and how it sometimes would prevent me from speaking in class because I was not confident in what I was saying. And I didn't wanna sound like I didn't know what I was saying, right? And I like to sit back and listen to what others in the classroom were saying because I was surrounded by some of the most intelligent folks from around the world. And my classmate said to me, I can't believe that you're saying that because you're one of the most intelligent people in our class. And we wait for you to talk because you're able to make sense and explain it better to us. I was like, what the heck, me? No way, right? And it was at this moment that I realized that I was surrounded by amazing people from around the world because I'm one too. Then COVID hit and we went to an online platform and the UCLA campus was lonely. I felt abandoned and alone on campus that became my home, all right? And it was like a ghost town. There were no more sporting events to attend, no more activities, no more smiles and laughs, and no more having to speed walk to class from the hill. And it was more like, hurry up and put on these lashes to log on to Zoom, right? And being a front row girl, Zoom classes allowed me to share the front row with everyone. And I did not have to turn around to see whoever was talking. And the only thing that seemed to change was that I didn't have to leave the hill to go to class. 
I could just walk to my desk, right? So throughout my studies, I started to gain confidence in being a scholar at UCLA. And I knew what it would take to get A's in my classes, you know, like things like the staying up late, hours of reading, the hours of watching YouTube on things that did not even relate to class, binge watching shows and saying, okay, after this episode, I'll start studying. Video chatting with friends, scrolling through social media, you know, the good old brewing procrastination. I could not be the successful scholar that I am today with the, without the help of the professors, faculty, staff, and all my classmates. I wanted to go to every class and be engaged in all this discussion, the weekly discussions, and understand the lectures for the week. And it would not, it would have been, sorry, it would have been easy to just turn off my camera and not be engaged in the Zoom class, but I looked at it as work. I got up every morning and got ready for class like I was going to a job, right? And learning alongside of all of you has been one of the most amazing journeys I've been on in my life. You have all helped make this experience so life-changing that I now walk with confidence, talk with confidence, believe in myself, honor and respect myself more, and most importantly, I am proud of myself. Thank you to each and every one of you here at UCLA who helped me to feel comfortable in my skin again because after the hate crime bashing, my soul was ripped right out of me. And finding a path of least resistance through a world full of violence is like living in a pinball machine for me, right? But now that I'm graduating with Latin honors, there's no greater joy, no greater pride, and no greater feeling of achievement as standing before all of you talking. Thank you all for helping me to realize that I am not a victim. I'm not a survivor. I'm a resilient warrior. Go Bruins!